This will cover the fundamentals of setting up promo and sale pricing. There are three different type of sale and promotions you can set up. First, there's contract pricing, then promotions, and then specials. You can use any one of the three to create a sale or promotion. The intended way to use these is to use contracts for customer specific sales, promotions are generally speaking date related, and specials are long term, not actual sales, but three for a dollar, buy two, get the third one free, that sort of use. But you are not required to use them that way. You can use them in any way you want. The primary reason to use one over another is the order of precedence. Counterpoint first looks at contract prices, and if it finds that item is on sale, it uses that price and doesn't look any further. If it doesn't find it in contracts, Counterpoint then looks in promotions to see if it finds a match. If it doesn't find it there, it looks in specials. If not there, then it sells it for the normal price one. So if you're creating a sale that you absolutely want to take precedence over anything else in the system, then use contract pricing, because that always comes first. We're going to create a promotion for this example. In this example, I'm setting up a promotional sale. First, we enter a group code. This has to be a unique name. Then enter a description to describe this sale. We'll skip mix and match code for now. We'll cover that later. If this promotion is going to have a beginning and ending date, you can enter that or check no begin date or no end date. Now we'll go to the rules tab. First, you enter a name for the rule and you can have as many rules as you want. Next, enter the minimum quantity to qualify for this rule. For example, if you get a price break, if you buy five or more, you would enter five here. Now select the method. You can choose from several methods. After choosing method, you then select the basis. For example, if you use the method of pick price, you would then pick regular price, price one, two, three, standard cost, last cost, etc. Or you could pick discount and then again select discount from regular price, price one, two, three, etc. Then you enter the amount or the percentage here. Now that you've entered your price, you need to select which items. You can select an individual item, a category, subcategory, or any other item attributes. If the attribute you want isn't here, then you can customize it. Just right click in a blank section, choose Customize, click to add a field, then, after adding the field, right-click and pick Simplify. Now you've added the new field, which can be included in your filter. Now we'll move to the Customers tab. If only certain customers will qualify for this pricing, you can enter that information here. Now we'll go to the Sales tab. This tab allows you to filter by store information and ticket information. Let's open an existing promo and examine the rules. Here we have a book sale. As you can see, there's no beginning or ending date, so this always applies. As you can see, we have three rules. Buy two and get 10% off. Buy three and get 15% off. Buy four and get 20% off. You can see the first rule, minimum quantity two, Method, discount percent, basis is price one, and the amount is 10%. The item filter is set to anything in the book category. The customer filter is blank, meaning all customers qualify. And the sales tab is blank, so no filtering is done in this tab either. The second rule is identical to the first, except for the minimum quantity is three, and the percent is now 15%. Rule 4, again identical other than minimum quantity 4, and the percent is now 20. If you have more than one rule, the order is top down. The first rule that's true is used. 
Now let's see these rules in practice. We sell one book and no discount is given. The price one and the selling price are the same. And here's the total for that line. We sell two books and we get our 10% discount as can be seen here. Normal price one is 15, but it was reduced to 1350. And because there's two books purchased, the total price is $27. So far, so good. Let's add another book. We should be getting 15%, but we're still getting our 10% discount. Let's check our rules and see what went wrong. Remember, the first rule that's true is used. When only one book was sold, none of the rules matched, so it sold it at price one. When the second book was sold, it looked at the first rule, that rule matched and so it gave 10% off. When the third book was sold it looked at rule 1 and it matched. Minimum quantity was 2. So a 10% discount was given. It never sees rule 2 or 3 because the first rule did match. To fix this we simply reorder the rules. Simply highlight the rule then click either move up or move down. Now, when we sell one book, no rules will match, it will sell for price one. When we sell two books, the first and second rule do not match, so it makes it to the third rule, and a match is found, and it's sold for 10%. When the third book is sold, again, rule one does not match, rule two does, and it's sold for 15% off. And lastly, when a fourth book is added, it will get 20% off. If five or more books are sold, the first rule is still true and they get 20% off. Let's save the changes and see what happens. The first book is sold and it's sold for the full price. The second book is sold and we get our 10% discount. Our third book is sold and now you can see we've got our 15% discount, $12.75. The promotion rules we've created work great when selling the same item. But for this book sale, we want the discount to be given for any combination of books. So let's test this and see if it works. We sell one book and it sells for full price. This is correct. We sell our second book and it still sells for full price. To get this to work the way we want, we need to use mix and match codes. Unless you use mix and match codes, all quantity pricing has to be for the same exact item. When you utilize mix and match codes, then the quantity is based on any item with the same mix and match code. So let's bring up one of the books on our sale. Here, we assign a mix and match code to this item. We will also assign book sale mix and match code to other books in our system. Now we need to assign the mix and match code to this promo. Because this was a previously created promo, mix and match code is grayed out. As long as your security code allows, you can use the lock button to unlock this field. And assign our mix and match code. Now let's save the promo and see if this works. We sell one book and it sells for full price. This is correct. We sell our second book and notice that both books now have 10% off. We sell a third book and now all books are 15% off. The next promo type we'll try is BOGO or buy one get one. You're not limited to buy one, get one. It could be buy 10, get one half off. Most combinations can be configured. To implement BOGO, just check this box. If BOGO is not checked, then the price for the minimum quantity is used for all additional items as well. In the example below, once quantity 2 is reached, all additional items would get 50% off. With BOGO being checked, CounterPoint looks for the exact number being sold. So with quantity 1, it uses regular price. 
When the second one is sold, it uses 50% off. With quantity 2 being the highest level listed, CounterPoint will start over again with the third item sold. Let's see how this works. We sell one for the regular price. We sell the second one and notice the second one is half off. The first one remains at full price. Unlike our previous example where once the quantity was reached all items got the discount. And the third item sold reverts back to price one. Next we'll look at how checking the box require full group to qualify affects a promo or sale price. For this promo we're selling golf tees. They normally sell for 50 cents each and we want three for a dollar. If the box require full group to qualify is checked then the entire rule is ignored until the full quantity of items is sold. Then once the full quantity is sold in this case three the first two will sell for 40 cents each and the third one will sell for 20 cents each bringing the total to one dollar. Here is the T. As you can see it sells for 50 cents each. I've turned off consolidated lines. This will make it easier to see what's happening. We sell one for 50 cents. The second one is also 50 cents. Now that we've added our third T, all the prices have changed. The first two T's sold for 40 cents and the third for 20 for a total of a dollar. The possible number of sales combinations are very extensive. I've created a PDF that will explain the layout of the sales and promotion screens, as well as examples of some common sale types. To download, click the link in the comments section under Show More.